Hi, my name is Noah Witt. I'm Anthony Collier. My name is Sanjar Besambai. And today we're going to be talking about reef decline in the Caribbean and the impacts that climate change have had on it. Reef decline in the Caribbean has become a serious problem over the past few decades. Some of the causes of this reef decline are rising sea temperatures, which is a result of rising CO2 levels under atmosphere. Ocean acidification and coral bleaching are just a few of the other causes of reef decline. Reef decline is a problem because coral reefs provide an incredibly diverse ecosystem and they give home to tons of different species of fish and have so much biodiversity. So what exactly is ocean acidification? Ocean acidification occurs when the oceans absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. That CO2 then combines with H2O, or the water, to create carbonic acid. This acid then raises the acidity of the oceans. In the graphic over in the top right hand corner, the black line shows the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere and the blue line shows the pH levels of the ocean. As you can see, as the CO2 levels have been increasing, the pH levels have been decreasing, meaning the oceans are getting more and more acidic. This is a problem because studies have shown that reef environments and the decline of them can be directly attributed to ocean acidification. This can also lead to other problems such as economic impacts and the coral reefs providing less and less protection for coastal cities. Coral bleaching is another phenomenon that occurs when corals release zooxanthellae, which is an algae they have that provides them with their vibrant colors and produces food for them. They, um, they release this algae whenever they get stressed out from their environment, which could be from many different factors like the ocean temperatures rising or the oceans becoming more acidic. Whenever the corals lose this algae, they lose their color. And this can be regained over time, but when this does happen, they become much more susceptible to different types of diseases and they have a harder time reproducing, making it much easier for them overall to decline. Now that we understand how climate change causes coral reef decline in the Caribbean, I'm going to go over how coral reef decline is predicted to increase over the coming years. On the graphics to the left, you can see two graphics, one with no adaptation and one with adaptation. Now, coral reef adaptation is directly linked to biodiversity of that coral reef. On the bottom left picture, you will see a high coral reef diversity. And in the bottom right picture, you'll see a low coral reef diversity. Low coral deep reef diversity is normally caused by coral bleaching, which was explained earlier. Additionally, for each graphic, you will see four different carbon dioxide emissions levels, with squares being the highest carbon dioxide emissions level and circles being the lowest. As you can see from the graphic, with high carbon dioxide emissions levels, coral reefs could completely decline by 2060 no matter the ad adaptations. Now, with circles, however, coral reefs can stay about 60% healthy by 2100 with no adaptations and stay 90% healthy by 2100 with adaptations. A second method is metapopulation persistence, which is the ability for a coral reef population to be self-sustaining. This is based off of coral reef coverage or the amount of coral reef that can be self that can be self-sustaining. These different lines show different prediction different amounts of coral reef coverage to be self-sustaining, with the rightmost line being only 1% of coral coverage causes self-sustaining coral reefs, and the leftmost line being 20% coral reef coverage being self-sustaining. The biggest thing you want to note is the red line, because once one of those lines crosses the red line, they cannot self-sustain naturally. We can already see coral reef decline in today's world. For example, stony coral in the Caribbean has already declined by 80%, going from being 50% coral coverage to just 10% in three decades. And from the graphs we've seen previously, this is only predicted to increase, and it's up to us to change this outcome. I'm now going to talk about how the impacts of the degradation of coral reefs in the Caribbean will have on people and the wildlife. When coral reefs are absent from the ocean, there's increased wave energy, which allows hurricanes, storms, and severe weather events to damage the properties and kill lives of Caribbean people. The people in the Caribbean rely on fish as their main source of protein. About 17% of them rely on animal protein from marine and freshwater wild caught 
aquatic animals. With fish also declining in population, with coral reefs decreasing in population, humans will have to rely on other food sources instead of fish and aquatic organisms. When coral reefs break from cyclones, hurricanes, and tsunamis, the protection to people who live on coral Caribbean islands decreases, which causes them to be more vulnerable to flooding and damage from the ocean. When temperatures go up, there's bleaching, which decreases diversity, making tourism go down due, due to people not coming to see the beautiful, colorful coral reefs. Caribbean people rely on these tourists to make their living, and degradation in the coral reefs hurts these people, their families, and the economy in the Caribbean. Degradation of coral reefs also hurts the fish that live in and around the coral reefs. These hurt the fisheries of people in the Caribbean, which impacts their livelihoods and their eating habits. These people have eaten fish in the Caribbean for hundreds of years, and with these fish populations going down, it's harmful to the Caribbean people. In conclusion, the Caribbean coral reefs have a large impact on the surrounding people, wildlife, and are set to decline in the near future, hurting generations to come. Thank you for listening. Here are our sources.